Let's see. Do we have some apps for you? I, I... No, we didn't have them in the package. They weren't in the package, so... I mean, I just read them, too. Oh, you did? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't. I just signed them. I did. That was my mistake. You should have had at least the uh, November... Yeah, I can do it. Next time. Okay, my mistake. Yeah, let's get. Uh, Just have to do your minute reading on the 16th. Yeah. So. Yeah. Send the send us the, the minutes the, from the other the meetings we haven't approved. <laughs> send us, send them around. Then we can do it. Okay. Um, so let's see. Doug's here with the errors and omissions. I guess is that right? That's correct. Uh, we could we could start with that. I would think. Um, and then um, Tom, do you have some special something special tonight? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. Well, let's let's uh, let's get on. Let's do that then. Um, Okay, so I believe you have a copy. You have two, two sheets. We do. Yeah. One, two, two. Mm -hmm. I could just kind of go down through that if that'd be helpful to you. Sure. What's your pleasure? Yes, go ahead, John. Okay. Um, the first, uh, so we have a total of five properties uh, tonight. Um, the first one, uh, Nina New City. Uh, she and John Alexander had a boundary adjustment there, two butters, those first two properties are butters, and the listers did not process that transaction correctly because some was taken away from one and added to the other. It was at about an acre, I think. So for Nina New City, uh, her, her value went down. She's the one that sold the land. And then you can see John Alexander's uh, went up uh, so, so Nina went down 9,300 and the abutter went up 4,900 just due to the, um, the way what that landed. Uh, kind of the re reason for New City, what is yeah. adjusted what? Uh, so also adjusted heat um, <clears throat> in, excuse me, the, uh, in our itemized cost sheet, there's a the type of heat and it was incorrectly double entered so that the property had more than 100% heat and that was obviously wrong. So we also adjusted that. Um, so those are the, uh, yes, yeah. I was just gonna suggest that we uh, accept these as we go through them rather than doing them all if that's all right with everybody. As he explains them then we can do it. Is that all right with you, Phil? Sure. Just so it's, I think. Yeah. So it's just one property that needs to be accepted, Nina New Cities? So if you want to do them that way, one at a time, yep. then her property uh, reduced in value by $9,300 because she had sold some land to her neighbor and, and we didn't process it, right? So because she had less land and we had adjusted that heat issue, uh, that was a total reduction was 9,300 for those two reasons. So how is she compensated for that? Do so what would have happened is as of right now, then her real assessment was up a little bit higher. And because we're in between the two tax bills for all these folks there, provided that there, this is passes, um, <clears throat> The adjustment would be made in their second tax bill, so that by the time they pay the second tax bill, they have not overpaid on the, based on the new value. Okay, thank you. What information do you need on a motion to accept the, accept an adjustment on a piece of property? Just uh, the name, fine. A motion to accept the um, errors and omissions on X property as presented by All right. the listers. I make a motion we accept uh, uh, the adjustment on Nina New City's property as proposed by the listers. 
Oh, I'll second it. Okay. Oh, is there two there? Oh, yeah. um, okay, so the second property, John Alexander, what is Nina New City's neighbor, so he gained the land and his value increased by four thousand nine hundred dollars. I make a motion that we accept the adjustment as presented by the listers on John Alexander's property. <coughs> uh, second. Oh, okay. And okay, then we have the third property is John McIntyre. Um, this is a commercial property up in Taftsville that uh, he grieved to us on both his properties actually, and we agreed with him, but we processed one of them but not the other, and we intended to process this one then. We didn't. So that's this this one. And that value was basically changing his neighborhood. Uh, his neighborhood grade is what resulted in that change's land value. So that was a total reduction of $112,600 as a result of that change. You're on a roll, Matt. Go ahead. Uh, I make a motion that we accept the uh, change as presented by the listers for John McIntyre's property. Um, second it. That's quite a change. Yes. You want to discuss it or not? <coughs> no, I guess we can't. I don't think much to discuss because they, you, you're done. Mm -hmm. It's a done deal. Well, this is for your approvals, but this yeah. is what we believe is. Yeah. <coughs> it's what we would, would have done at grievance. Oh. No. So. So we, we got that one. Okay, then on uh, page two of two, um, these two properties are both involving uh, Cordy Merritt. Basically, uh, she has two parcels. There's a, a roughly 10 acre parcel that, with her house on it, and there's an abutting roughly 90 acre parcel that's completely in current use. Um, and there was a, the ownership was a little bit complicated. Um, so on, for the house property, the property with the house on 10 acres. Um, the property is 50 cent owned by Cordy Merritt and 50% owned by Cordy Merritt and Martha Kudamarsh, who are trustees of the Henry Merritt Trust. So it was given the limited number of space to put things in, I could see why that got confusing. And at grievance this year, Cordy said, wait a minute, I only have one property, that's only one property, that's not two. It was right at the very end of things, and we did some quick, we had a quick look at it, and we changed it. After we had a, more of a look at it, we realized we shouldn't have changed it. So I brought up all, I did all this research, and I showed it to her, and she apologized and said, oh yes, I had it wrong, I'm sorry. So this is putting this back to splitting that property, because we combined the two, because we thought they were in the same ownership. This is splitting it back out. Um, so what happens is the, the, the first parcel there um, is, the, is the house parcel. And so that reduced in value by $191,900 because that just lost like 90 acres of land. The second parcel um, that is owned only by the Henry Merritt Trust, only by Cor uh, Cordelia Merritt and Martha Kudamarsh as trustees, um, that parcel you know, right at the, uh, right now, that's, that was made inactive, and now we're making it active again. So it kind of, in terms of the grand list, it went from zero to 254,000 as a separate parcel. Hmm. So there was a net gain there to the grand list um, for, of these two transactions to make that proper. Because one reason is, uh, if, you're, if you, you only have one house site on, on a particular, parcel if there's only one house. So the the standalone, the land only parcel went from being acres other, if you will, to now two acres of a house site, which is more expensive, plus acres other. So the net change as a standalone parcel means it's going to be higher. 
than if it was somebody's back land. We could do those together. I make a motion that we accept the changes from the listers on the two parcels, two merit parcels as presented. Uh, I'll second the motion. Okay. All right. That's good. I'll just sign these. Okay. See, if you don't mind saying that now, then I can give that to Clyde tomorrow morning. Okay. You do it. Thank you. So let's uh, moving along. Where's the signs, Philip? It's down good. there. You got the two. You have two of them here. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have seen them once or twice before, at least once. Um, also had a gentleman from BLCT visit uh, as well to uh, explain um, the benefits to the policies. And um, this is also a recommendation by BLCT um, for policies to implement and to follow through on. Um, formalizes what happens if an employee is injured, uh, where they should go, or actually let me back up, who they should report the incident to, where they should go to have the uh, incident treated, uh, a follow-up discussion um, to kind of get an idea as to maybe what happened and better ways to prevent it from in the future, 
and then we have essentially what is called a return to work policy or as they've got it called here a transitional duty agreement um, or return to work policy uh, to uh, essentially a policy of the towns that we work to get the employee back um, into a working situation as quickly as possible um, that's a benefit of course to the workers compensation pool uh, of which we draw to um, which means that uh, they are on that pool for a less amount of time which helps our premium uh, gets the employee back into a working situation which is actually a higher wage for that employee um, but it also just gets him back into a work routine uh, in that he's not essentially at home or, or in a position where he's not working um, it may be a position or a job that is out of, you know, the realm of the department that he's in, depending on the circumstances of what we have available. Um, and it could be as simple as writing up um, or doing basic things for people just to um, get it done and to get him back into a work routine. I think we changed the wording on here to have general tags such as town manager, finance, um, instead of names. Um, but the underlying policy is the same, you know, taking that out. Um, so I'm looking at a couple of things here. I'm looking for the board to formalize adopt uh, the four policies, the injury reporting, medical treatment, and incident review policy, and the return to work policy but also as a part of the medical treatment, um, we are looking at designating Alice Peck Day as the designated provider. And there's been some confusion as to why we wouldn't want to designate Mount Escutney Hospital. Uh, they do not specialize in occupational health. Uh, and occupational health is essentially work-related uh, injuries. Uh, they are very familiar with workers comp um, red tape for lack of a better term uh, and also speaking the language um, with the employer with the insurance companies uh, and most importantly with the employee themselves um, so Mount Scotney does not have that program Alice Peck Day does um, we also visited one other um, potential provider. We found Alice Peck Day to be uh, ideal, uh, particularly from really a kind of a one-stop shop uh, area where you can get a general practitioner, um, very good doctor who's been there for um, upwards of 20 years. Uh, you can also get referrals to, um, uh, I forget the terminology, um, physical therapy and also to specialty, um, special specialty doctors as well. Uh, the employee does have an opt-out form uh, in here that um, is a part of this policy that um, if they choose to see their provider, their own provider, they may do so. They do need to sign the form. They also need to see the designated provider first, but they are free to go to their own provider um, after that. Um, after uh, two injuries, again, we sat down with VLCT. Um, this was strongly recommended. Um, we had a shell of this. We had an incident reporting procedure um, that we were utilizing, but it wasn't utilized well enough. Obviously, we had one injury that um, went unreported until the day, um, until several days later. Um, we did not have a formal return to work policy and uh, we did not have a designated provider either. So we had, um, I believe, two individuals over the summer go to just straight go to an emergency room um, and have it dealt with there. Um, I have a question. Um, this obviously is in my way of seeing this is a great benefit to the insurance company and not necessarily I'm talking money strictly dollars not necessarily that much of an advantage to the town because someone might be 
back to work uh, conceivably a month quicker than they would be otherwise. But I'm unable to do the job that we're paying them to do. And I assume we're going to keep paying the same rate um, once they come back to work. Or, I mean, I don't know just how the dollars work here. But we, we would not be getting, if they weren't doing their job, they would be doing some other kind of make work kind of job that might not be much of a benefit to the town. Um, so two, you, yep. yeah, go ahead. Two thoughts on that. One, it comes back to bite you anyways because they'll increase the premium to make up for that. Mm -hmm, I understand that. So you may be paying him a higher rate, or actually you're not paying him a higher rate, you're just paying him a rate. Mm. Um, whereas if he's out, the insurance company is paying him, um, but then they turn around and up your premium to make up for that. Second, it's been my experience, mostly my experience, that um, given um, untrained, say, nurse practitioners, which is what um, people are seeing a lot of lately, you see some indefinite return to work dates um, and very unclear um, strategies for bringing the person back. And I think that it ultimately is in the town's best interest to get the person back and into a routine um, of being at work it tends to, provided that the injury allows him to get back to work at a quicker rate uh, or pace than he may have been or she may have been. Yeah, I, I'm only, my, my criticism is only involving the dollars and between us and the insurance company. And if you think that's a wash, then certainly, certainly great benefits to getting people back on the job, not sitting at home, you know, watching TV or whatever. Get them, getting them at least active, even if it isn't what they normally do. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's a complete apples to apples, you know, it, he's out longer on, on insurance and you yeah. know that the premium rise is a direct correspondence of how much they paid but you generally see a rise in your premiums if it is especially if it's a prolonged experience um, once that pops up onto the onto the data um, and is counted and then it's there for I forget how many years three years maybe uh, it'll mm -hmm. stick with you Right. Um, a couple of things, Dave. Uh, thanks for cleaning up a few things. There are a few wordsmithing things I'd like to ask about. But the first question is, we are talking about workers' comp. We're not talking about short-term disability or long-term disability. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, in sometimes one leads to another. But uh, workers' comp is paid for Short-term disability can happen if, for instance, on my way home tonight, I drive off the road and I crash myself. I'm mm -hmm. not on the job, I'm not on the clock. Mm -hmm. I get injured, I'm out for six months. Um, Short-term or long-term disability then kicks in. Workers' compensation uh, is an insurance program. I believe it's at least state mandated. I believe it's federally mandated as well. Mm -hmm. um, that if you are hurt on the job, it right. essentially works like a short-term disability. Okay. Uh, and you receive pay through that. Eventually, if you are completely unable to return to the particular job that you were hurt at, they will retrain you and put you someplace else. Mm -hmm. But it is it is an insurance program, and again, it's it, our, our company is self-insured through VLCT. Um, so back to the dollars and cents, it's kind of a benefit to everybody to get everybody back as soon as possible. But um, right. it, is, it is different, I'm sorry, it is different. Um, I believe that the amount that they receive, which I think is 66% of their actual right. value is, a reduced salary. is about yeah. the amount that you get for short-term and long-term right. disability. Do we actually have policies for those two items? So I haven't tackled this one yet. Um, perhaps next year, but interestingly enough, 
we have long-term disability, but not short-term short disability. Yeah. And I've been perplexed by that one for yeah. a while now. Okay. Um, my understanding was because it was due to this, the, the, our sick day policy and people have accrued X amount of sick days, but you know, you need to be here. And actually, the way it's written now, it gets capped out. So this pertains to only a couple one or two employees left that have been here X amount of time. You know, somebody that Martin, myself, Doug, you know, um, Nancy, you know, anybody that's been here can never, you know, short term, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have a long term disability, I'm, I'll come back to the fact that I'm perplexed. We don't have a short term disability, okay. but anyway. Yeah, we don't need to go into that tonight. Um, so there's, three documents on the employees workers compensation practices. You introduced the term municipality and um, in, like on page three, you have it on page one. And on page three you have work assignments. The provision of suitable work assignments is left to the discretion of the municipality. Is that, are we clear about who that is? Would using the word town suffice there as opposed to the more, to me, a more legal term? Uh, where, where are you on the uh, On page three, the last sentence of the second paragraph, and then on page one, the second full paragraph, you, it's, it's mentioned in there. So you prefer that just to be the towns? Well, it's, oh. I, I haven't heard us refer to Portland as a municipality anywhere else. That's the only thing that was kind of. I believe they're one on two the same. The same, okay. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't go to my thesaurus today. Um. Okay, so that's not a big deal. Um, you're back to using on uh, the. I think the municipal, like, so you would have municipal, state, and federal. So the municipality being town or local level. Okay. Okay. Um, I think it is clearly spelled out if someone wants to see an alternative medical provider. Um, I, I, I could follow the steps that were there, so I think that's, that's good. You're still using terms like DHMC, which I would think everyone in the Upper Valley would know what that means, um, but you spell out Manuscutton. And then uh, I know what the Vermont League of City and Towns is, but I forget the insurance side, B-A-C-I-F. So we may spell those out at some point, just to clarify. Where are you in the DLCT part? Uh, page three of three. On the injury reporting medical treatment and incident review policy? Uh, incident review procedures, C. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, yes on the injury reporting medical treatment policy. Page three. Page three. No, number six has a VLCTPACIF. Uh, you want that to be VLC, right above it it says VLCT passive. Um, do you want the next sentence to also say VLCT passive? Is that? Well, I think if I'm you hearing? just sort of define who VLCT and what PACIF is once, it'll be fine. Because you mentioned it in paragraph two, item two, item six. So, so the first time it's mentioned? And I forget where I saw DHMC. Uh, page two, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So 
So I'm going to highlight it. I don't know what PAC is. Don't spell it. Let's see. 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 Let's And then on the notice of intent to change health care provider. It's actually an official form. You got to write the state of mind on that one. Well, <laughs> the, the, the third checkbox, I don't know what that means. I have previously treated with another health care. I think it's missing a verb. Or something. Been, been treated. Yeah. But we can blame that on the state. So. <sighs> This is an official form. I'm not sure we can deviate from no, that. No, that's fine. Okay. But the other piece, of just following up on what Gordon was saying, is um, you emphasize in the document that this is also for um, improving safety with within the town staff. Um, so I hope we would sort of implement that part of this procedure as well as the. Um, insurance part. I will mention the 1968 first aid box we found the last time you brought that up. But, uh, we'll, 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 I can wish. We'll do our best. <laughs> Bill took your words and went out and cleaned out a few things and I think he said the box was from 1968. Anyway, we'll, 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 <laughs> I'm a little cloudy as to where I was in 1968. Well, I've got a question or two. So if if you get hurt, will they see you the same day? They will see you the same day, but you need to call first. So all right. I mean, unless it's at like 4:15 and they and they're done at 4:30, then you would go the next day. But you do spell out that if they're not available, they can go to you know, Scutney. Um. So. We can actually also, it's somewhat of a, so if it's a non-emergency, you can also go to Alice Peck Day Emergency Room. Will we get charged to the emergency room, right? You will. That's why I don't like the question, because if it's a non-emergency, then well, most well, likely they can wait until the next morning and go. Could we use clear choice as, as well, both of them or not, for something on a case-by-case -case basis? Um... I would prefer that they go to, uh, and I believe that the preference would be that they they go to one, so that there's no even if they can't be seen. Yeah. Our hours go to four. The highways hours go to three thirty. Again, if it's a non-emergency, um, you know they can make an appointment for the very next day. If it's something that they're so sore that they need to go to see somebody, the Alex expect Day emergency room will they, they will go fairly seamless. Well, it will seamlessly go from the emergency room to their occupational health office, which is 75 yards down out the door. Uh, my other question was. So now that we're going to Alice Peck Day, are we going to start doing uh, maybe pre-employment drug testing and physicals in that office too as well? We they have the setup to do that. Uh, we, we actually have a pre we actually have a CDL drug testing pool system and pool set up through VLCT actually as well. Um, if we wanted a non-CDL person, and we haven't broached this subject, um, for instance, I don't think I got a drug test. Um, if you wanted non-CDL drivers to get drug tested, Alice Peck Day could take care of that. We haven't broached that subject yet. But as far as CDL testing goes, um, that's taken care of.
Yes, I'm done with questions. Did you want to look at this one? No, I'm good. Okay. So what action do you want to use? Um, it all depends on whether, Phil, you need to see the, the, the another version of the wording correctly. Uh, right, right, we can right. get that back and, and we can put an actual, like, a, approved on the date type thing. Um, if you're comfortable with it, you can approve the policies and um, name the Alice Peck Day as a um, designated provider. Uh, I'm comfortable with that. Um, so I'll make a motion that we accept the new employee employee workers compensation practices and policy and agreement um, and then should we, I think we should, should do it now as a separate motion. I was picking yep you can do that as, you can do that as a separate motion. Okay. Yeah. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Anything else? Do you want to do that, Martha? Do I have, a, have to do a second motion? No, let's, let's do this one first. Okay, sorry. So, yeah. we're approving the policy, but not the, but not the uh, hospital. So, all in favor of that on the motion? Yes. Yes, yes, okay, good. So now we can go ahead on, on the, the second motion. Okay. Um, make a motion that we name just Alice Peck Day, is that just as the, um, what's the official word for the contract? Designated the, provider. The designated provider for the town of Heartland workers' compensation processes. I'll second it. So I desire, uh, where, where in this policy does the emergency room, is that, is that fall, falling in under the the policies that we just adopted, or do we need some motion for that? Uh, no, they are, if it's a, it says emergency facil facilities are either Dr. Hitchcock Medical Center or Ronald Skipping Hospital. Okay. The bottom line is, is if it's an emergency of emergency proportions, they can go to the nearest okay. place, so quickest good. place possible. Okay, so did we get a second on the provider? I think I did, yep. Okay, any other yep. discussion? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, is everybody in agreement? Yes. yes. Okay, you're good. So two things. And then you're gonna fix the, uh, we'll fix spell, the up, spell up the uh, abbreviations so everybody knows what they mean. And yep. And okay. I'll just, I will just, as you're looking through that, give a spiel. I 
don't think I gave the night of the opening uh, on the budget, but um, I've given the spiel to at least Phil Gordon, if not you, that um, I mean, the budget is perhaps the biggest policy decision that the select board makes. It truly kind of directs myself and the staff and, and where we're going to go for the year. Um, just to, for instance, you know, in last year's budget, um, we had the um, front steps uh, to the activity uh, to the rec center that we're still working on and potentially can have done in the spring. We have the activity center, um, third coat of paint, uh, and a back door. Uh, the new or, or rehabilitated roof to the rec center. We had the hiring of the buildings and grounds person. Uh, we also had the paving and um, uh, one of the ditching projects. So um, those are just kind of the real big highlights that was in last year's budget and um, for all intents and purposes of what we carried out. Um, to date with an exception of the front steps. So again, it is, there are things in here that we've talked about, the new highway person, um, some kind of unclarified, but certainly I think the monetary amount is there for buildings and grounds, uh, and certainly um, some other direction uh, as well. And I just want to reiterate um, how this kind of points, you know, where we're going to go for the year and hope, what we hope to accomplish. And I think that that's just sometimes gets lost. And I think that's just important to kind of to put out there. So the overall increase is uh, nine. I don't have. I had it on my overhead. Give me a moment. But it is. Uh, I believe it was nine point six six. Um, that is highway. Um, that is highway general fund. And it was in the minutes that you just sent me today. And that's highway and general fund combined. combined. Yep. Let me just the highway was a, a budgetary increase of 11.58, tax rate of 17.33. That's because of the uh, uh, we're weaning off of the surplus that we've used for the last two years. Uh, we utilized over 90,000 in 2019. Fiscal year budget, we used 45,000. We've taken that away this year. So that is revenue that you need to raise above and beyond last year just in and of itself um, which increases causes an increase that's separate from the expense increases that we've we put on paper the general fund was a 3.18 percent um, budgetary increase i talked a little bit about some of what's going on in the rec center um, drives the tax rate to a 4.53%. And again, it comes to about a 9.66, which is very identical to what, and where we were at last year. It's almost an identical proposal. Last year it was a buildings and grounds person. This year it's an extra highway person. Mary, we did the, we did the workers' comp errors and emissions from uh, the boosters, and uh, we just barely started looking at the budget. So glad. We so. missed you. Are there orders to sign? There is, but I don't know where they went. So I'll start off with a question, Dave. I'm looking at this sheet right here, the comparative budget thing. At the bottom, mus miscellaneous. Yep. The general fund. Yep. Yep. So how do you how do you come up with a miscellaneous number? Is it? Or. Uh, so I'm sorry. I think you're talking about there's a whole miscellaneous um, section. Um, I thought maybe that's what you were talking about. No, I'm, so. I'm looking at that, that the summary. 
Well, that, there's a whole section on miscellaneous. Is there? Yep. Out. So on the uh, expense part, <coughs> all right. Uh, um, on the uh, general fund expenses, you go to um, and um, Gordon has pointed out that if these are not numbered, my apologies. Um, we ran out of time, so I didn't tinker with the Excel spreadsheet to get that to pop up. Second to the last page, oh, of course. It is the last. It's the last item. Yep. All right. Very good. Thank you. Yep. And the increase there is mainly the $25,000 for um, the Fort Brook Road property uh, that I've you know, essentially shifted from the 21, the Route 21 house, 38,000 we had in um, a loan amount. I took 25,000 of that since we don't want to have that loan amount, um, but we now do have Fort Brook Road. Uh, the unknown there, we can get into that a little bit during the town manager's update. Um, it is a bit of a wild card, uh, but um, I budgeted, I took the 25 and budgeted there for some on explainable or unforeseen expenses that certainly may arise on that property. Also up the old home day expenses a little bit on that section as well. Spent time trying to go through the appropriations uh, section. And I don't know how many from volunteers in action to the CATV or Auto Creature Health. Um, I mean, it's, it represents only 18%, but I, I found myself circling one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, eight to nine of them that I had no idea what they did and what the benefit to the town and community. Works. And I, I don't know um, if I should wait until after the Heartland Cares meeting and maybe bring it up there and see if I can get clarification on um, what some of these groups do. Um, yeah, I certainly don't want to be an ogre and cut out a few hundred dollars if it's actually really useful to someone. But some of the numbers are significant. And I just don't know how to get it resolved in my head as to, uh, I, I know the process and it, and it, it comes up at town meeting and, and um, you know, we vote on the 138,000 figure. Um, which ones are you, do, did you want to talk about which ones you well, questioned? I, I, I don't know if Wait, I really want to drill down for right. Yeah, I finally found it. Okay. Yeah, um, it's in action. Towards the end. Why the rescue squad is on here? I didn't think. Uh, Fire River Council on aging. Both the fire department and the rescue squad are their own appropriation. So yeah. the town. Uh, so the rescue squad is made up of five family volunteers. Five, and they do respond. For the most part, they are a first on the scene responder, EMT. Essentially, arrive in their own car before the ambulance, Windsor, Woodstock, or Hartford will respond depending on the section of town. Mm -hmm. But um, the first responders generally are the first to arrive. They've got their very own appropriation and budget. Mm -hmm. Spent 16000 for since I've been here. Um, the fire department also is works off of an appropriation. And then, you know, John gets up and asks for right. the 63 to 70,000 each year. <coughs> they vote on it um, because it was an increase this year. You know, they've got a petition out there, but um, that's why you see it pop up under appropriation. Sure, sure. Um, and again, I, you know, I understand what Aiken and Hartland is doing and their appropriation. I understand the fire department and you clarified the rescue squad. Um, but if I dig in here, there just seems to be overlap with a lot of health services and, and so on. Yeah. We've, uh, all I can say is it's taken me a year and a half to get familiar with most of these. Yeah. Um, 
Tom and, and Sarah are here. It's just been, and I, it's up to every individual select board to kind of come to an opinion themselves. I formulated the opinion that there are numerous ones of them. There is some overlap, you know, maybe between fuel assistance or something to that effect, but usually for a different reason. Again, between, say, Listen and SEVCA, um, it's been my understanding that each one does do something a little bit different. And if we could mold them into like three instead of 22, that would be highly desirable. Um, but that's not the case. I don't know if Sarah, Tom, you want to uh, chime in there? It's great to coordinate all the organizations. <laughs> they all do a little bit different things. If you picked each one of them, I'd be able to say something about some of them. Sarah would do too. But um, yeah, there's a, a, a way of coordinating these to be one model. It would be great, but I don't think you're going to do that. Right in this, the state of the market. Did the farmers market ever take spend their two thousand? Uh, it is in tonight's warrants, I believe. Um, they requested it. Um, they are going to build their oh. their their. Oven, bread oven. Their, uh, their <laughs> chapel uh, in the springtime. Um, chapel? Okay. What? I'm calling it a chapel. It's oh, quite, a, unique, the, it is quite uh, a high quality design at this point. Oh, is it? It is, I believe. Oh. Yeah, we can take some of the blame for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. And they have come back and requested 2000 for next year. I can't remember. Yeah, so uh, it's, they've got it spelled out in the report. I can't remember it's what the request is for. Gordon, it is top line. Uh, OK. OK. Good idea. What is the very last thing out of Gucci help? $500 on appropriations. That's new this year. I 2,500. 2,500, yeah. Who is it? Help, it says. Teos. Oh, Adequity Help Foundation. It, the, they missed that word. Yeah. Okay, I know what that is. Okay. Opportunity for the town to demonstrate its investment in its, in its residents to be able to support organizations. But there's also a certain point at which looking at which of the organizations truly are kind of in a town way and are really reaching out to be available to citizens, and then other organizations that might be quite worthy, but should be supported by the people that use them as opposed to by the town it's it i don't think it's i don't think it's inappropriate to go back and review every so many years what's on this list uh, what typically happens at town meeting is that um, on average no one shows up to give a report on the request now and then someone does and if it's something new such as the farmers market last year we get a we get a good a good uh, spiel or whatever we want to call it a good a good review of, of what they're asking for uh, the, the problem with listening to every one of them with a long dissertation on what they do is that we don't really have time at town meeting to, to do that so I don't know how you, we need a system, some sort of a system. So, in fact, that, well, I was, what Phil was going to say, um, has said, is um, this Heartland Cares group, yeah. um, maybe it's a volunteer group and so forth, but as an advisory group, could take on the responsibility 
of putting their thoughts together on these requests, since they know um, better than new folks on an on individual basis what they all are and can make a, an argument one way or another for including them. Yeah. I think you need an advisory group that yeah. these focus are not are out of our hands, really. I mean, because it's all done by petition. Uh, yeah. But isn't it part of the town report each of these gives as a one page chance to explain what they're doing? Supposed to. Yeah. So yeah. that is information. Well, I, I think there's a, the issue of the monetary amount, and as I sort of said, some of the monies are very small. Um, but it's also a, uh, I, I know Hartley Cares, uh, which is a spin off from the community breakfast. Uh, and a companion program to the Municipal Resource Working Group um, has tried to wrestle with the idea of a directory of where services would be. Uh, and, and to some degree, that's my issue here, is I really don't know what they are. Uh, is this a service that I could use? Uh, you know, that's someone I know who needs, needs something? So maybe, uh, um, asking that group to continue the work that they're doing to try to have more of the definition of what the services are um, would help our uh, citizens know what's, what's happening other than page 32 of the town report, you know, which they may read or may not read. Um, in regards to your remark, remarks, $138,000 is gets to be a little bit more significant than nothing. But we do have to remember that half of that is for the fire department. So it's, when you add them all up, it's, it is some more of a percentage. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We do have, a, I think we do have a policy. If, they, if anybody wants an increase, they have to stand up and ask for it. A town meeting. <laughs> um, some way. Petition. No, I'd say. I do a petition. Um, any more questions about this miscellaneous uh, appropriations? Uh, I have a question. Yes, <coughs> Gentle Navy, but we brought up the Heartland Cares Group, and we just brought up the Municipal Resource Group. And these are just community. Um, volunteer advisory groups and so forth. Out of the uh, municipal uh, or the municipal resource group, uh, there was a breakfast here a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, primarily it was on, I'll say the word ordinances, but uh, in terms of enforcing ordinances and that sort of thing. And uh, there was an interest on the part of the group to have um, a person as an employee of the town on a part-time basis to take care of some of the issues that came up. I don't know, Dave, if that's been folded into the budget or how that works. Um, it has not been. And I've given this some pretty serious consideration as to the timing and, and sequence of how to move forward. And in working with the resource group, but also some of the things that we've got, we're, we're, we're a little bit behind where the resource group is. So there's been a need to hire a highway personnel now for equal amount of time, really. Um, and in this budget, that person is in here. I felt as though in discussions with this board um, recently and in the past weeks and months that um, I would put the pieces in place such as the ordinance itself. We still haven't gone through that process with Two Rivers on Aquiji. Um, we still haven't um, figured out the enforcement part of this or putting the extra person into place. So in my mind, that would be something that we'd be looking at next year at this point in time. Uh, however, I think 
and we have a resource meeting on Wednesday, um, it would be my recommendation that the resource group continue in that process, um, both with putting that ordinance together um, and how this would look and be a part of that leading into, um, I think Sarah actually put that timeline out in one of the meetings. Hopefully have that process, the ordinance and process done in the spring, and then we kind of revisit and pick up putting it into the budget next fall. Um, it's certainly, if there's anybody that would like some assistance in putting implementing that, um, would be me. But I think that, um, you know, in following, you know, the budgetary increases and in, in what's manageable, we put the buildings and grounds person in last year, we have a highway person for this year, and then look towards this enforcement person next year at this point in time for the, the following budget. That's, you know, so, that, that's my recommendation. And you, 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 your recommendation comes out of a, uh, a lengthy, you know, uh, contribution on your part and your time with that committee so you know exactly where they're coming from. Uh, is there a, a process where an organization like that that would like to see something put into the budget makes a formal petition to the board to be have that included or is it more convince the town manager that we, we can afford it? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I think it has been the, my understanding, I got three members here, um, that the committee was going to formally put together some recommendations to the board. Okay. And I think that that was probably be discussed Wednesday night as to how you would like to proceed in that. Okay. Either option is available to you, but uh, I think at some point <coughs> this resource committee wanted to make formal recommendations. Okay. I I would agree. I, I think the one unexpected thing was that with an attendance of 68 people at that breakfast and coming away with the sense that the community understood what was being discussed and was overwhelmingly in favor across that, that group that participated was, I think, um, was encouraging and perhaps not, um, I, I don't think that the, that the um, work group necessarily anticipated such, um, such a quick catch on. Uh, but I don't think that that really changes the timetable that it's gonna take to, to make changes well and thoughtfully, which, which takes a little longer than, well, we can discuss it on Wednesday, and then um, maybe we, we can put forth the recommendation at any time. Right. And uh, we can also bring it up at the town meeting if we wanted to add it. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. The remark I would make is that, uh, like any problem, when you look at a problem in its entirety, it looks overwhelming. And where the, we... We could certainly single out certain parts of what Dave is hoping to do that we already know what needs to be done. And, and I'm, because I don't quite agree with Dave here. I mean, I, I think waiting what amounts to about two years to get this thing going is not necessarily a good idea. Um, and I had thought if we put a little bit of money in the budget for a, a person that only worked one day a week, or even less, part time thing, and you could assign them to do something that we know needs to be done, that the town manager doesn't get to or, or wishes he didn't have to do, that might be helpful. And then we would work our way into the whole thing. Gordon, might we, um, to, to reinforce your thinking and to explore that a little yeah. bit more, might we ask uh, 
the members that are here from the municipal resource group to bring to the Wednesday meeting um, you know that they sooner than later make a formal request for some time to present to the board so our colleagues on the board have a better awareness of what what's been being talked about um, and and then uh, and then we can explore how what's the feasibility of the yeah. one day or uh, uh, or one week a month or whatever that that, that uh, is uh, I'm also not familiar is it is is the activity seasonal you know are there uh, from a building perspective versus driveways and so on um, but I think we we really haven't had a discussion about it so I think if we start with that presentation with you know that would be real helpful yeah I think that I think certainly something we could talk about tomorrow on um, Wednesday yeah okay for this and this would be for this budget season well because we're getting on it's not currently there's nothing in the budget for it right and I don't know whether we should or should well I, I I'm just thinking this is a what's the increase 11.38 or something no you six seven okay you're right on that one <laughs> and then, At some point, we're going to start saying no to some stuff. Well, and I, aren't we going to be hit by school tax big increase? Yeah. But so I know we can't always take that into like we have to do what we have to do, but the, uh, that that is coming to the simple the simple thing of the of the properties that were missed prior to the reappraisal would have mm -hmm. easily offset the one day a week. Right, Martin? Absolutely. <laughs> so Absolutely. Not that not that what we're gonna do is gonna fix all that. <coughs> still not still no guarantees whatsoever. But you know, enforcing the driveway permit um, ordinance that we have would have brought some of those, a couple of those properties to light. Um, it could have also potentially reduced some of our road problems. maintenance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just from um, my biggest point would be to um, make sure that we have our ducks in order in that this isn't just a, I, I think the message is heard. I think that um, you know, I, I'm essentially operations, so I need to implement. And I think my message would be there's the political reaction to want to appease the group that has brought this forth. Um, I think it's important that we get it right and that we roll something out that's going to work um, and that we all feel comfortable with this. And I think that taking an extra half of a year to see again. Mm -hmm. Two Rivers hasn't even started on this, so we still need to, what should be a very simple ordinance, I expect to have some discussion on it. So my biggest concern is that we just continue to make sure that we, we put our ducks in order, we get the ordinance right, we feel comfortable with it, put somebody in place that's going to work with that and, and move forward in, in a very rational and coherent way that that works as we intended it to of course it you know may have some speed bumps but i would certainly may want to make sure that um that we do it in a qualitative manner i, I think would be my one piece of, of yeah i 100 percent agree on that one dave and i wasn't even thinking of that particular part of this of this uh, position because we don't have we haven't seen anything yet and I don't think they've even got the grant yet much less written anything correct um, so I will not take away from what I see as an immediate need but uh, <laughs> I, 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 and I, I think that it, the committee would be right to discuss this once yeah. tonight definitely um, I'm just a I'm just a cog in that piece there but um, 
I, I think that the way we've been kind of moving forward and trying to implement certain things, I think we've been trying to do in a, in a coherent way and um, just make sure that we do it in a, a way that we feel comfortable. Sure. Um, I, I, I totally agree, and uh, I think the stakes are high because you don't want to do it incorrectly and have a shot down. down and, you know, the springs, all the to do about the safety resource officer and the various things. I mean, it's a real community. There's there's a vortex of issues here that are sort of swirling around this. And, and um, I think the sooner we can begin to sort of wrestle with one of them, uh, the better. Uh, and maybe we look at what we're saying here. And if we were to look at a one day position, it would only be for six months starting the second six months of the fiscal year. Hopefully that would give us eight months or nine months to actually do get an ordinance done and sell it and so on. But so I think everyone's right here. Uh, and I, I hear Mary and 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 and, um, and the folks that have been involved with this, I think we're you know it's what is the Accounting term the LIFO last in first out, um, and there's I don't want to be guilty of that. I mean, there are other many other issues that we, we're wrestling with. And Dave, just to uh, uh, give you a compliment, which I'm loath to do, but I will anyway. Um, I think I like how you think about this stuff and proceeding very. Um, logically to create this structure that you have a vision of and I I I feel to use a favorite word of yours comfortable with that vision and I I want to keep going at that pace because I think um, it's it's sustainable and and we're going somewhere that we need to go so I like I like that and you probably won't get another compliment from me for eight years. For the rest of this year. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't hold your breath. <laughs> yeah. Can we? I'll make sure I get a copy of that. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. I'll go to the URL and get it. I'm going to change the subject here. Move on. <laughs> so can I? I've got a few things marked here. Can I? Uh, the term here. On the budget? Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. So Get me out of the appropriations. I don't want to be an ogre here. I think we, well, in regards to the appropriations, I think we, I, I wish we had a system so we better understood what was going on there. Maybe we can work on it. <coughs> Dave, on the highway, <coughs> two pages in, there's um, a big increase in overtime. On the winter maintenance, winter general maintenance. Um, just below the fact that we're hiring another person. So we got labor fee, an increase of 14%, I assume, or 15%. That has to do with another hired person, doesn't it? Partly. Uh, technically, it's two. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, last year, we had a rough winter, obviously, but um, we did have, we only really had a buildings and grounds person for about a month. Uh, then we lost Dan, uh, that buildings and grounds person essentially picked up slack. Um, didn't take Dan's route, but um, picked up the one ton route and um, BJ went into Dan's route. Uh, we lost the buildings and grounds person at the end of January. Uh, we picked up John Dumas later, much later in the year. Um, maybe not February, but maybe into March. So we were inconsistent in the position of buildings and grounds last year, or at least that extra position. So this year, we have a buildings and grounds position. Uh, it's presently filled. And then we're looking to fill another one. So technically, it's really two additional positions. We talked about this a little bit last 
meeting. Now it's completely possible with the additional hands that um, you know the need for overtime as a whole kind of goes so you know so the crew isn't coming back and doing stairs and, and sidewalks and et cetera. You've got a buildings and grounds person doing that. You've got an additional highway crew member who is out doing um, you know intersections or, or whatever's being picked up and other you know we sliced the route a little bit here and there. So it's possible that the actual amount of overtime goes down, but that's kind of a tough thing to guesstimate. So if you look at where we were at last year, 22,000, I think that, um, I don't see it right in front of you, but I think the number is 28,000. That's right. Um, I don't think that's unreasonable just simply kind of applying some of the math to two people, but we did bring some of the hours down overall. So it's a little bit of science and a little bit of a guesstimate. Thank you. So you said two things. You said. And you can't look at the. Um, so that overtime, I think the 68% increase is actually wrong. Um, you can be fooled a little bit by looking at the budget for fiscal year 2020 being 16. Um, the actual fiscal year 2019, I think, is the better indicator, that, which was 22,500 in overtime. So I think that um, you know that going from 22,5 to 28 with two additional people is not a stretch. Again, overall, the time spent out there may come down and it may equal out to be 22, but I think that the uh, 28 certainly. Um, based upon what we're staffing is a fairly safe number. Martin, the, the percentages are the comparison between the two last budgets, I think. Yes, so we've got 16,000, which is kind of low. So that's where the 68 comes from. But if you take last year's number of 22 to the 28. I understand that one. Yeah. But that, that's where the numbers, the numbers represent the last two. Okay. All right. Then uh, under the uh, general general fund fund expenses, I have some questions. <coughs> uh, first thing is selectmen, which is something we haven't. And I guess maybe this is as good a time as any to bring this up. Um, we we had a discrepancy in my mind. There's one member that doesn't paint their piece to her pay. And then there um, should be um, the clerk and the chair are supposed to get more, and they didn't. And we have the same amount budgeted for another year because we don't have any control over this technically because the auditors are supposed to do it, but we don't have any auditors. <laughs> so so it, we just have the same number year after year. Mm -hmm. And is there anything that we ought to do about any of that? What what exactly are the auditors supposed to do if we had so? Um, set the budget for this selectman. Oh, is that right? Yeah. They never did though. And they never changed it. Yeah. They used to do it, I guess. Yeah. Years, many years that was ago. a long time ago. It's been four thousand dollars forever. Well. Okay, so what are you asking? What What are no, you I'm asking? Not sure. Uh, I didn't even realize, but the last two years, Dave has divided it up by five and, and paid everybody. And Prior to that, I got I got more, and Martha got more, or whoever was clerk. You should. And uh, I I don't really care. It doesn't bother me personally. But I I try to think about this as why does somebody want to be chair, or why does anybody want to be a selectman? Whether they, do, should they get compensated for it? Is it is it something? Is it, encourage people to want to do the job at all, or doesn't it matter? I don't know. Uh, certainly the hours to the rate doesn't um, 
No. It's not too lucrative. <laughs> You get a little, a little a check, a check once or twice a year, and how how I get paid, right? which is Tom Campbell used to say that's how he afforded his camp in Bridgewater, which of course was just his story. <laughs> <laughs> So if we were to make that, if you made it five thousand, well, I don't know whether we really have a. a, a I'm not sure we should do that. But if we we can't right do that. We can't do that. What? That's like Congress. Yeah. You know. Well, they do. I know. <laughs> yeah, I was say, they're, they're, uh, but nobody those. likes that. I mean, none of the constituents, no. uh, none of us appreciate that. I don't think. So, and if you say the auditors used to do it, and then we don't have those people anymore, then there's- But well, we do have, our, with our external auditors- They can't be, they can't be doing that. No, oh, they don't. That's not them. They're not residents. No. In town. <laughs> so there is no policy then for who determines. Can't be you, Dave. I, I'm, I'm going to go on the limb and say you guys tweaked this in like 2012 or 2013. Ooh. No, we had a lot of things. But the 4,000 I think stayed the same. Okay. We had to go back and do a little research. Um, that, at that point you said there's a per meeting rate. Oh yeah. Um, so if you miss meetings you're supposed to get dinged. Um, and there is a slightly higher rate for the chair and the secretary. There was. Um, there, that, I'd have to go back and look at the, the, the sheet, but um, that framework worked within the $40,000. The $4, we just the past two years have done just 4000 divided by five and out one a check. So you tweaked it. Not, few years back. Again, the $4,000 rate was the same. I think you kept it within the budgeted amount. You just changed the structure of it a little bit. But um, for lack of auditors at this point in time, you do oversee the budget. So if it's not you, it would be me. And we may have to do an employer review of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> you have a review coming up, don't you, Dave? Uh, but this would be an employer review. Uh, I know, I know what you're saying, but on the other hand. You know, every meeting you do that. <laughs> we, could well, put, we could put it under the appropriations and then really confuse people. <laughs> <laughs> we have to stand up and tell me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll make sure I wear my running shoes. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. you know what I remember is the chair used to get $26 a meeting. Did you get 26 maybe? That's what I remember. Yeah. I, I remember, I think, Gordon pointing out that when you miss a, if you miss a meeting, you're still a select board member and you're probably still oh, doing right, 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 what right, needs right, to be right. done. And, and that's when we stopped checking off attendance in the who's here. So that's not in the, that's not written down anywhere. So but you're I, still, you're supposedly, you're still under the checkbox. Well, we haven't been checking any boxes. No, we have not. That's why I just divided it by five. <coughs> Which this is, is what? this stuff kind of goes went away, went with Carolyn type someplace and didn't get passed on. We used to get twenty two dollars a meeting, and you got twenty six. Oh, yeah. that's a huge so it was a injustice. Per, per meeting? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. So somebody looked at that check box. Yes, and they must have kept track of that. Mm -hmm. And then we said, let's 
abandon that and, I, like Dave said, just divide it. I don't know that we ever said that, did we? Well, I remember Gordon pointing out that. I do remember him saying that, yeah. Um, all right, so what do you want? I, I, I don't. Do, I don't think we. I don't care. I don't have any wants. I wanted to talk about it. Martin? May I have a thought? Not anymore. You had a thought? I, 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 my thought was, if you, of course, I'm doing math on the fly. If you upped it to five, you could give the clerk and, uh, the clerk and the chair a thousand and everybody else eight, and I think that would work, but I'm not sure mathematically. What? Yep. You divide by five? And then? 2,000. 2,000, 2,600, 3,400. You said, okay, three times eight, which is 24, and what were the other two? 1,000 each. 1,000. It's only 44. 44. Yeah, perfect. Do you it's remember? It's not five, five. Yeah. That's what I would suggest you recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Raise it by 400 bucks. And... But we don't have the authority to do that. Who has it? Why won't you You're the ones, you have authority over the entire budget. But I think you're missing the point. The, the, it was the auditor, the auditors. We no longer have auditors. Nothing was put in place. Auditors are never supposed to tell you what to do with your money. They're supposed to tell you what you did with your money. No, these are the, do you remember the elected auditors that we had? Like Val Rainey was one, and they checked the town report. I think they put the town report together. These are not external auditors. These were internal. And but so, even so, it's a really odd job to give them. Yeah, yeah, it is an yeah. odd job description. Yeah. I'm just but thinking but they did have it, okay? Mm -hmm. And now nothing has been established. And for us to just take that on s reminds me of something that's going on federally that I don't like. So let's not, you know, just take that on ourselves. All right, I agree with you. Can we move on? Yep. Thank you. Okay. So, just for clarity. Can we just leave it at 4,000? We can, but, so do all five of you get the same amount, or do you want to divvy that? I think it was 30 bucks a meeting for Gordon and, and Martha, and whatever was left for the three of you. Either way, we've got, we can present it next meeting if you'd like. We've got something from, would still check the boxes. It was still dependent upon you coming to X amount of meetings. It was a it was a per meeting amount. Yeah, it was 22 and 26. Do we want to? I've heard no. Just so just dice it between five, and I've heard no. Not not a per meeting amount. That it should just be a yearly amount. Let me ask that. And then the next question would be: Is Gordon and Martha supposed to get more? I would go with the yearly amount. It makes the math easier, and and I do think they should get more. We, we haven't had a, a, a slacker in our group for a long time. Whereas I'm thinking of it. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> no, we really haven't. I know. Once in a while, somebody misses a meeting for a good reason, but there isn't any. Well, I had to do this, had to do that, had to do that, over and over and over, that mm -hmm. so could be the case. Just so. for, to help future generations yeah. from what we went through. So I get it, we'll do a yearly amount based upon the, the monthly, or the meeting amount that was presented in this, what we've seen. But I'm going to bring this next meeting and I want you to formalize this okay. in, in minutes so that we can, if anybody, mm -hmm. you know, Martin and I go to the mail and we get hit by a beer truck or something, somebody knows <coughs> something down the road that this is how much you guys are supposed to get. Are you going to get hit by a bear truck? 
Look at you beer. Say beer truck. Beer. Oh, okay. I'm surprised you didn't say wine truck. Beer, beer or wine truck, a Calamon <laughs> beverage truck, a feral truck, okay. you know, a baker truck. Okay. okay. Where was that distributor you worked for years ago? Uh, two of them. Calamon and Tapos. Uh, anyway, G House. Okay, I was moving on. I like that. My That's question. Good. Okay. We'll do that next meeting. Um, you have a somewhat of an increase for the constable. What did you have in mind? Basically, on our well, one, he gets the 1.5 percent increase, um, but he's already hit, um, I believe, 4,500 for this year. So I don't think what um, he's got um, in there is out of line, and he is certainly has been expending his um, his mileage. So I think the mileage is um, appropriate as well. Okay. So it's not like we went from 1550 to 18 bucks an hour or something like that. And the same thing on the animal control officers, a significant increase. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, that ebbs and flows, but uh, again, we're seeing a trend. Um, the actual amount spent for 2019. Uh, I believe she's already, she's over for the first five months of this year. I think she's over what she, we had budgeted for her for the first five months. So um, at, you know, what was it prior? Um, 1200 bucks, it's, you know, pretty easy to hit the 1200. You know, last year we had a horse incident and we had to take a horse away. That took time. Um, but we've also had some instances of um, some animal cases and one dog incident that just doesn't seem to want to go away. Yeah. I don't think it's been taken up too much of her time, but it's still, you know, it did originally and it's still kick around mm. you're somewhere over in your neck of the woods there oh oh yes yes not my dogs yeah <laughs> so <laughs> um, I... um so that's kind of <laughs> animal control officer you know in the grand scheme of things it's 1100 bucks but uh, 1200 bucks but no it's not much um, okay um next thing i've got checked here is the conservation commission and you've reduced theirs 2500 to 2000. I know that they've got a couple of projects in the uh, what we call it, wish stages, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm wondering, and I think they didn't you say they they take their money every year, and if they don't spend it, it's put away for put away for a project hopefully down the road? Well, it's put away for conservation purposes. Yeah. So if some of the land comes up or something, um, yeah. it's available. The quick answer is this was put out to um, the Conservation Committee Commission directly. Um, I was actually just happened to be at that meeting where they they talked a little bit, they heaved and hawed over a couple hundred bucks for signage for the, um, the legal trails and for walking. At the end of the day, they felt as though they could do it for the 2000. Um, I actually talked to Bob about utilizing the 500 that had been there, and he they came back and said, no, they just wanted the 2000. So this is kind of their budget. Um, the $500 reduction is uh, the local share of a grant that they did over for the um, the town forest land behind the school. Uh, they did a scoping study to have that become um, handicapped accessible. Um, they don't need that local share this year, so they just opted not. So that's, this is, this is from them directly. Yeah, and Dave, if I recall correctly, they're, they've been talking about running a capital campaign to increase the, their, whatever the special fund is that they use for supporting land acquisitions and so on. Um, so, but that's, that's not here. Yeah. 
Well, okay. Well, I like I like the theory. I put a little something away every year. But how come they can do that and we can't do that? I see how they do that. So we're on the line of voters voted on it. Um, same with the library. Uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you're running a deficit. So if, you know, was to say you overspent for the year, um, overall the general fund, but the conservation committee didn't. So which means that, you know, you didn't raise enough tax money to begin with to offset the expenses, yet you're taking 2000 or $1,500 and putting it into a reserve account, kind of borrowing money to put it away. Um, I think it's a good idea as long as the budget in and of itself is, you know, you maintain your budget, then if the Conservation Committee doesn't use what they've asked for, it goes to that fund. I don't think it's an unreasonable um, idea as long as, you know, we don't run the deficit. That's all. Um, library also, uh, either by court case at this point, um, or by the voters is their extra also goes to a reserve fund. Thank you. Yeah, I just have one more thing because we've covered the others that I talked about. Um, the sore subject of the North Heartland School. Um, we keep, you know, we spend quite a lot of money on that and we don't, and it sits there empty. Is there anything we can do about it? And this is, this is just the operating part. This isn't the capital part. Well, we've never given it to a commercial railroad. No, I just think we ought to do something. Hmm? We should try to do something. Yeah. Just to, I mean, I don't mean to sell it, just to rent it out. Yeah. I do like the idea of seeing if CATD could, you yeah. know, could use it. The only, the only problem with renting it out is you've got to go, you've got to get top dollar for it because now you've got to pay your share of the property taxes to the state. And then you've got to be a landlord on top of it. So there is no point in trying to get somebody in there. You'd be better off to let somebody use it for free than you would be to rent it. Really, when it comes right down to it. Well, I'm all for renting it if we decide to rent it, but then you better get enough rent for it to cover its expenses. Yeah, I hadn't realized. That makes sense, yeah. I think you also need to be prepared. When Josh Boynton and I were over there, um, his wife was interested in his day, daycare. And we were over here with um, fire prevention. Um, we would have needed a building permit as well. Um, the bathrooms are are not handicapped accessible. Um, it's in order to be, you know, an architect, you know, could go in there and not have to live by that standard. But um, it was built for eight-year-olds, so so it kind of gives you an idea of you know, one of the bathrooms is really tiny. Um, better and also the the downstairs we need to kind of put an entrance in that can exit to the outside um, was one of the recommendations of fire safety so there is a little bit of work if we want to get serious about doing something with that there's some tweaks that we need to make to that building in order to make it on the up and up you have to climb up the stairs don't you have to get out of the basement uh, you do, and then there needs to be a little bit of a fire coating between that and the upstairs. Um, that being said, it's a, it's an asset that we would certainly could, could nice use building. to, you know, I. We could use to what? No one has wanted. Thought maybe when they get big enough, something like aging in Ireland, or you know, some sort of, you know, somebody, you know, I, I'd like to see the rec center do something with it. Um, again, it has some limitations to it, particularly with kids, with the layout, but, um, you know, it's... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was recently visiting uh, somewhere and um, was really struck with renovations to an old factory that Thomas Edison owned, and it's now high-end rental properties, condominiums, you know, can we, with some sort of 
investment, can we turn it into a series of rental properties? Mm -hmm. There's a need in the Upper Valley. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm not sure who we can <coughs> land on. I think you just need to put some, you need to, and again, we're on a little bit of a, putting the highway guy and some building ordinances and other things, and I won't get into some of the other projects, but, uh, you know, I think that it would, at some point, if you wanted to do something with it, you need to tweak it. Create a plan. Um, but it is a, the layout is a very nice open space layout, so it's kind of neat. Um, but it's just, it's just either us it's or the person wanting to lease it, we need to do some work. How much land is there? Do you know? Does anybody know? What's that? How much land? Is that parcel? Uh, I don't know what it is combined with the actual, f all the fields. Mm. Because remember the years ago that that group was looking at senior housing or affordable housing, I think senior housing in Heartland so that people who downsize could move into a place in Heartland and they couldn't find a appropriate piece of property they looked at other towns, and those towns where it worked, the town gave a piece of town property to the project. And it had to be a minimum of 20 units to be economically viable. So... Thomas was blood. I don't think they have a sewer system. Um, water's a little shaky, too. Yeah. Is, yeah, so that would not have the structure in this town to, to do things like this because we do, don't have sewer water. Yeah. Did anybody mention it to the CATV person who was here? Yeah, yeah. Dave said he, they knew. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I couldn't refresh your memory, but my my original phone call with her, I said, oh, we got a nice building, and she was on to bigger things. Okay. Is there a picnic table there on the grounds? I don't remember. Um, and is there, I don't think so at the moment. Is there any kind of a roof? Is there a, a, any any roof over anything uh, on the out outdoor space? Like for a... Like a pavilion? Yeah. No. No. I'm also under the impression from the board that North Hartland voiced um, an opinion that they would like to maintain, mm -hmm. whether it be, I don't know if it was the open fields or whether it be the playgrounds or what are they? They didn't want us to sell the building, right? No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah. Sarah, you live pretty close by. Do you guys have any, any thoughts on what might go on there? Yeah, I mean, our kids went to, I mean, we were in and out of that building every day for like, seven years over the span of our kids being in daycare there. Uh, and, you know, and I know how they use the outside space and the hill and the fields and things when that was a daycare. But, and it was great as a daycare. We really worked work well for that. But now what should be, I mean, this is, this would be another great working group to take a look at what's the, the you know, the, the, the highest and best use of that property and facility for this town, whether it's to develop it in some way, whether it's to sell it, whether it's to um, you know, repurpose it to something new. And it's, there, there could be a lot of different ways to think about that. Someone needs to skip across the room when that float's going. <laughs> <laughs> Are you volunteering that? No. <laughs> I was waiting for a voice to start <laughs> modulating. Sarah, do you think that the it could be a, um, a gathering of some a few people who live in North Heartland or nearby? And, to take a look and start to take a, it. Sure. Give that a little thought somehow. We've heard people folks. I think it's possible. So I think not that tonight. Not tonight. No. It doesn't really have anything to much to do with our budget. 
but but it's it's one of those things where if a group of people yeah. began to think about it and could just bring some ideas forward, it might start the process rolling to to move forward. Sure. So we have a, I forgot how it was here, $2,500 or something. I do think it has to do with our budget, Gordon, because it's an ongoing it does. expense. It right. does. And yeah. I'd like to just see it, you know, maintain itself somehow, financially. It, it is such an asset, it ought to do more than maintain itself, and that's what's going to take some thought to really turn it in. To something that that has value to the town. Well, right now, if it could even just maintain itself, it would be a huge plus because it's just been sitting there empty and just needing this, needing that for years. And we just put a new roof on. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, it'd be great if it could actually turn some kind of profit. But even if it just could cover its costs right now, be a real boom. Yeah, I don't have any notes. Anybody else can <coughs> So when do we need to approve the Um to the first week in January. Uh, there is, uh, I did think of something actually in the shower this morning. Um, the culvert um, being replaced on Mace Hill uh, is, will be covered by FEMA with an exception, I believe, of 7.5% of it. So um, we talked a little bit about this in the committee there. Um, I need to just <clears throat> chew on that, um, call emergency management, make sure I got the 7.5% right, and um, whether we need to add that into the budget. Uh, that would be like a $16,000 hit, so we may need to tweak something if that gets added. I so, know you had the state as well as the federal folks looking at it. Does it, are there any state reimbursements for that? So how it works is um, federal government picks up 75 percent, and um, generally it's 12 and 12, 12.5 and 12.5, unless we have a local hazard mitigation plan in place, I'm and then down. the municipal share becomes seven and a half percent, down from 12 and a half. Hmm. And just kind of, an, we haven't gotten an estimate back on this. We probably won't until springtime from a from engineering. Mm -hmm. So the culvert box cover, it's like a two two hundred fifty thousand dollar expense. So we'll just, I just need to, just need to mull on that for a little bit. <clears throat> so we may need to, we may need to dabble with that in there somewhere. What do you mean by that dabble? What does that mean? It means think about it. No, he means like adding to the increase or? Open up your checkbook, that's what he means. <laughs> <laughs> or decreasing something else? You can do 7.5% of 200,000, 250,000. Depends when the timing comes out. Depends on whether, you know, there's uh, you know, you've got, you, you talked about a, a list of funds that are out there. Um, you know, it's not really a bridge, but it's kind of a bridge. Um, you've got a bridge fund out there with like 85 in there, 85,000, but we've also got three wooden bridges. Do you really want to toy with the 85 or 83 that's in there? Just some things like that. That. Well, you could take it out of the, half of it out of the surplus and the budget out of it. It's not. You could deal with it in the surplus. I've mulled that one over. I didn't quite want to throw that at you tonight, but um, you could deal with it with your surplus. A um, couple other options um, that you could do with it. I hear that food all week. 
I think we should Why? stop talking about the budget. Do you have any manager's notes you want to do now? I only allotted 20 minutes for that. Yeah. yeah some yeah. serious procedural policy things. Ah, uh, boy, just a wealth of good news here. Um, so two things of note that happened in the last week. Um, I haven't looked through it, but um, Green Mountain Power has now, I believe, I'd have to look at the, in, uh, the email, has given us both designs, design A and design B for the intersection with their cost estimates. Um, we then need to have the other utilities vet that out. We had somewhat of a concept on plan A. I believe this is plan B at this point in time. I, again, I've got to look at my email. Um, the idea would be to get that to the utilities so that we can get pricing packages together. Um, that would be, my understanding was, is that we wanted to put that to the voters on the utilities. Mm -hmm. So we would, the effort there would be to package that into town meeting article. Um, it would be by Australian ballot. So if you're gonna do an Australian ballot, that would be the time. Um, again, we're kind of fighting uphill a little bit on that. But um, the fact that if that's what that email was, that would be good news. We can maybe push the other utilities along. The other one is um, I did go up to 21, 22 Forkbrook Road um, last Thursday or last Tuesday um, before the holiday with Dale from Dale's Mobile Home um, and John Passett. Uh, to see if Dale would be interested in this. Um, at the time, he gave it like a 50 50 um, analysis as to whether he'd be interested or not. Um, John Bissett didn't, um, um, he doesn't, it would be a difficult, it would be more in the line of Dale's and Dale's mobile home. Um, it comes down to two things. There is a septic permit on file um, from 1999. Although looking at the map and then looking at the hillside where it supposedly comes down, I can't reconcile the two. So if we're going to be able to move that in a very legitimate way, that septic siting um, would be important. So I need to kind of spend a little bit of time with that. And there is road access, so the, the driveway, if anybody's been up there, you kind of access it through the Father Jim's driveway. Um, there is a shared access to that property, um, although I, looking at it with just a, an eyeball and not survey equipment or anything like that, it appears that the entranceway is more off of the Father's driveway and not through that shared area and I can't really guesstimate as to whether you can really access it through the shared area. So that needs to be kind of figured out. So um, we need to, we'll need to take a look at the, the septic and, and the, the access just to hone in on what's going on and, and yeah. how usable it is. Were you, did you bring along the representative from Dales or Mr. Dale? Um, <coughs> To, with the idea of buying that mobile home or citing a new another mobile home there. Um, I brought him there for all of the above. Okay. Would you be interested in a parcel like this? Is this mobile home resaleable mm -hmm. um, type thing? And. And what was his answer? Uh, it was, uh, I'd give you a 50-50, I'll talk to you after the holidays. <laughs> was his I answer. I, I guess, I don't know what you mean by 50-50. Um, he, maybe yes, maybe uh, it's no. A coin, it's, a, it's a coin flip. Um, I think there was some discussion as to, um, you know, if you could do work for, you know, 15 grand or 10 grand on it. And, Right. Make it livable, and then you know, can we know the cleanup and right. The state has this program where 
I don't know the details, but if you're a mobile homeowner, they will help you upgrade to a new mobile home on that same site. Mm -hmm. and, and, and energy efficient. Yeah, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's really geared toward a very low income oh, strategy. Um, the key to that, I think, is the septic. So you're thinking there is no septic system? There is a design on record. Right, right. Okay, and it doesn't have, it's not, it's engineered and it's kind of an engineering uh, sketch, for lack of a better term. It doesn't have boundaries, it doesn't have surveyed boundaries and this is where it is and, and you know, looking at where he's got proposed driveway and then looking at where, you know, the piping goes. I'm guesstimating as to where this is, and then I'm looking at the hillside, and I'm, it would take some work to get, so to lay some piping in there. Now there is excavation marks coming down a certain way, so it, it you know, Mike Willis did the drawing, so it's, it'll take a little bit of a conversation with Mike Willis. It, you know, that was 20 years ago, so. Um, I mean, he could have drawn it and it may never have been built, right? Is that what you're thinking? Um, I'm just thinking, I just, you know, usually you can look at it and say, okay, there's the leach field, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. I can maybe see where the leach field could have gone, but it's not too far from a pond um, or some other junk vehicles. So, um, but the piping from the house down to the leach field would be, you know, there's ledge and I mean granted this is 20 years later it might have been more open and, and but there is what looks to be a, a different road coming down it could very well be that that's where they excavated and that's where it is um, but it's not completely in line with where the septic design mm -hmm. was so again I just need to kind of you know I need to get somebody out there and have a discussion with Mike or somebody and just say okay this is this is what went on that being said, in Jim's file, there is a letter from Mike Willis saying that he inspected it after the fact. Oh. That's Jim's. I didn't see that in Mike's file. Doesn't mean that he didn't inspect it, it just I didn't see that same piece of paper in Mike's file. Hmm. Hmm. But it's a it's also a rough road up. But. Yeah. Um, you know, I never really heard clearly that the residence was empty. I s assume it is now. It is. Okay. Okay. There was a broken window. We, we put some um, plywood on that and we did paddle lock the door so that it doesn't become like a... Mm. No, it's a spot, you know. It's, it's a pretty rough shape, though. I, it would take a certain breed to climb into that and live there at the moment. Is it um, broom clean? What's that? Inside, broom clean. Cheery up there. <laughs> yeah, do that with the flute there. But, uh, okay. So, let's do it. Do you got anything? I'm just freezing to death. Really? You are too? Yes. What's wrong? I'm so Sick? cold. I guess, but. You're older. Look at Matt. Yeah. What, what did you just say? I've been you older. Yeah, you're, you're, you're older. <laughs> yeah, you're older than you were. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, we all are that way. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, sure. We haven't officially adjourned, right? No, we haven't. Right. So we got to do I the. Uh, we got to do the. Uh, we're going to a, to an executive session, so we need to do this correctly.
I move that premature general public knowledge regarding the town's pending legal issue with Heartland Properties LLC would clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage because the select board risks disclosing its legal strategy if it discusses it in public. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I further move to enter into executive session to discuss the town's pending legal issue with Heartland Properties LLC under the provisions of 313A1E. Is it 1 VSA section 313? Did you want to read it? Uh, yeah, sorry, it's 1 VSA. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to make sure it's done. Does that need to be seconded too? Yes. yes. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, Bob. Okay, so we are. Mary could sign 